Good morning, folks. We've got earthquakes, 3D supernova analysis, ground level enhancement science, and your weather alerts. But we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star sees the coronal hole departing to the right. No big flashes of flares or CMEs, but we do have plasma filaments snaking in towards center disk. The sunspots continue to disappoint. Even the larger group fails to flare and find magnetic complexity as it spreads weakly without interaction. Solar wind had a minor re-intensification yesterday which briefly set unstable magnetospheric conditions but no storm conditions. One of the incoming plasma filaments had me firmly staring at the screen as it had an electric surge through the magnetic structure. Luckily it collapsed and surges laterally outward instead of exploding as a CME. Folks, after coronal hole activity began to subside the last six months and return to minimum polar positions, we've got another opening on the heels of the departing one, dark top left. We already saw a six-pointer yesterday, but it was not a significant event as it was 500 kilometers deep. In most parts of the ring of fire, a strong convergence of wind past the main rain lines would make a quake watch, not usually a factor in the continental U.S., but this convergence line cutting across the state lines of New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, and into California well, took the Oklahoma uptick that had been underway and jumped it in sequential order westward along that exact same line. Folks, there is a new 3D model of an old and well-studied supernova. The silicone detections are fascinating to me, especially given the cosmic chemistry implications. Amazing that we still update information on a 30-year-old event. Up next... Folks, ground level enhancements are not good news for technology or human health. They are driven when powerful solar storms drive secondary neutrons to the ground, which are a much higher health concern than other forms of cosmic radiation. Today it takes ground-based neutron monitors, but this paper describes a prediction model based solely on X-ray flaring and proton flux, which could give as much as 15 minutes warning before the storm, whereas now the alarms go off when the radiation is already here at the surface. Folks, our podcast member and conference speaker Tony Rango is on vacation in Belize. Hopefully the powerful tropical system sucking energy in from the Pacific won't be too troublesome. What's a vacation? We've got big storms coming in the U.S. tonight. Eyes open on your local forecasts. This is going to get rough. We've got the rest of the world's weather as well with shots of our star to close. Yesterday's fly on the wall revealed the ionosphere critical frequency data we showed in yesterday's news, discussed the binary sun story released earlier this week, and took a look at a major blow to our community's anti-glyphosate campaign. We'll do this run again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.